Good morning and welcome to our daily briefing here in Hamilton County. As always, I'd like to thank Jay Gates, our interpreter, for being with us this morning. Thank you, Jay. Um, so a uh, couple of things. I want to update the numbers. Um, and as you know, the health commissioner at 2 o'clock every day updates the numbers on the Hamilton County Public Health website. Uh, but I do, I talked to um, the health commissioner this morning, and so today we have 38 positive tests of COVID-19 in Hamilton County. Three of those individuals are hospitalized. We have zero deaths. Um, if you'll recall our numbers yesterday, we have had an increase of 12 cases, 12 positive cases in Hamilton County since yesterday. So as you can tell, we are on the upside of the curve. Remember, our efforts are attempting to flatten the curve, but we are clearly heading up uh, on, on the upside of that curve. Uh, I want to say, uh, per our conversation yesterday about the stay-at-home order and how we in Hamilton County um, are enforcing that order, uh, it's clear many residents and businesses are taking the stay-at-home order seriously. We cannot thank people enough for that change in behavior and for the continued sacrifice being made both by residents but also by business owners in this community. Um, this is a significant hardship and I think um, as we try to follow the advice of the health professionals both at the state level and locally here in Hamilton County, uh, we do need to recognize that this is a serious challenge and sacrifice for so many in Hamilton County and we are uh, grateful for everyone trying to comply with what we know are best health practices. We've received a few reports and some questions uh, about businesses continuing to operate and so first I would like to ask people with questions to refer to the governor's order. This is the stay at home order that we've been talking about. It's available at covid19.ohio.gov it is also available on the county's website, hamiltoncountyohio.gov. Um, we posted it because we knew there was so much traffic at the state level. We wanted people to have easy access to the stay-at-home order. And so if you have any questions, refer to the order. It's, it's in pretty clear English. Uh, it's easy to understand. But if you still have questions, um, as you heard yesterday, uh, the local health commissioner makes the final decision as to whether or not uh, people are complying with the order. And so uh, his name is Greg Kesterman. He's the Commissioner of Health. He was here on Monday. Uh, but if you have questions, there is a hotline at the um, Health Department. It is 946-7847. 946-7847. So if there's any uh, concerns or questions related to businesses still being open and operating, um, please call that hotline and they can give you some guidance. Uh, before we get started, I, I do want to um, mention that there is a lot going on, both at the federal level and at the state level related to the coronavirus and some of the relief that could potentially be coming down to not only local governments, but the residents and businesses in our community. And so as you know, um, I believe the federal package was passed. There have been a number of iterations and I think there's um, going to be more to come, uh, but I will be jumping on a call later on today with um, some folks that, that represent our federal electeds uh, to get some clarity as to what kind of assistance will be coming our way, both on the private side for small businesses and on the public side, uh, because as you can imagine, there's a significant strain to local government and the services that we are providing. Uh, trying to stay up and running at this time uh, virtually has been challenging, uh, and so we need to be able to respond to that and to what is coming uh, by way of some financial hardships as our revenues are reduced through primarily sales tax, 
hotel motel tax and parking revenues, uh, we're going to have some significant losses in those funds. And so uh, we are relying on our partners at the federal level and state level to help us um, through some of the financial hardship. So uh, there was um, a stability package that was passed. It was $150 billion for state and local governments. It's a stabilization fund. And so we're going to get some details about that this afternoon, again, both private side and public side. And then uh, the legislature is meeting today. Um, my understanding is they are not going to be meeting very often. And so we have also reached out to our representatives at the state level to make sure we are all aligned, uh, not only on the financial piece, but also on some of the relief that we need by way of some of the regulatory things that they control. Uh, you know, it's about permitting. It's about uh, open meetings. It's about virtual meetings. It's about the building itself. And so we are going to be uh, talking to our state reps to make sure that we are in partnership with one another to be as open as accessible as possible to the public particularly virtually um, but also respecting the safety of those of us that work in the building so today we're going to talk about PPE um, as we look at, at other states and other countries where the virus arrived earlier than it did here we are preparing for increased caseload in our health care system in a greater need for PPE which is personal protective equipment um, today we're going to talk about PPE Nick Crosley is with us he is the director of um, emergency management and homeland security here in Hamilton County. He is the expert in the field and I'm going to let him talk about where we stand at this moment in time. Uh, before I do that, I do want to throw out a, a number. I, I'm, Nick, I know you're going to talk about this, uh, but we've been asked uh, from folks in the community, how can we help? How can we donate? What can we do? Particularly as it relates to this equipment for emergency responders, for folks that are working in the healthcare setting, particularly in the hospitals. Uh, we know we have a finite supply of PPE, and so people have asked, how can we help, how can we donate, particularly if they've got some of that supply. So the number for PPE donations is 263-8200. 263-8200. And so with that, I would like to turn it over to Nick Crosley uh, so that he can elaborate on our efforts here in Hamilton County. Thank you, Commissioner Driehaus. Um, as the Director of Hamilton County's Emergency Management and Homeland Security Agency, we serve all communities in Hamilton County and have been working aggressively uh, uh, trying to work with both the public and the communities and the county and the state and the federal government on response and coordination uh, to the COVID-19 uh, emergency. Uh, just for a way of uh, sort of an outline of what we're doing at this time, uh, one of our big efforts is on uh, public outreach and education. Uh, so we have uh, lots of information at alert H at um, hcready.org. Uh, we've also set up within alert Hamilton County at alerthc.org a specific COVID-19 alert. Uh, we have alerts for all the weather and the events that can impact Hamilton County, but specifically if you scroll down to the list of alerts, you can sign up for uh, direct communications from our agency as well as uh, general government as well. We, t we continue to communicate to all of our communities in Hamilton County as well as all of our Hamilton County partners. Uh, that is uh, uh, vitally important in this time that we are putting out uh, correct and factual information related to COVID-19 and we work particularly well and are in coordination with our local health departments, uh, uh, in particular Hamilton County Public Health and Cincinnati Public Health, Springdale and Norwood. Uh, and then we're also working with our state and federal government partners. Um, uh, the entire system in the United States is strained at this point. However, uh, working well with the state of Ohio and through them with the federal government is critical to ensuring that we're doing everything possible for the residents of Hamilton County. Uh, I do want to reiterate as we talk about communication and working with the public, um, a couple of things. One, please, please follow the stay at home order. Um, if you're not one of the critical enterprises or you're not, you don't have a reason to be out and about, uh, please stay home until the governor uh, lifts that stay at home order. Uh, social distancing does work. Uh, we do need to flatten the curve as Commissioner Driehaus mentioned. Uh, we also want to reiterate that um, we don't need people hoarding. I think you've seen the CEO of Kroger and other major companies 
Uh, I know I got a delivery from Amazon yesterday uh, that the systems are still up and running, uh, that um, most things are available. Uh, maybe not every day, but most things are available. And we're asking people not to hoard. And finally, please follow the, the instructions from our local health care providers. Uh, if you're experiencing any kind of symptoms, follow the directions. Some of them say call your doctor, talk to them. We're, we're definitely uh, encouraging telehealth at this point. Uh, but please follow those so that we uh, do not overwhelm our, our local health care system. Uh, finally, as I mentioned, uh, our next big organization, our focus as an agency, is to coordinate all the different entities across the board that are responding uh, and attempting to recover from the COVID-19 emergency. So I mentioned we work with all 49 communities in Hamilton County. We're working with uh, all Hamilton County elected and appointed officials. We're working with all of our health care providers. We work both directly with health care providers as well as working through the, um, the uh, health care collaborative. Uh, they're a great organization, and we're also working with our public and private sector partners, so working with school districts uh, and any other uh, organization that, that uh, we've reached out to. Uh, and then finally, I want to mention the personal protective equipment. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've been, uh, uh, we've been very open about our communication with the community, about what we're doing to respond and to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Uh, so the, the, the situation with personal protective equipment is serious. Um, it uh, is in short supply. Uh, we are doing everything as a local government, working with the state of Ohio and the federal government to get as much equipment to uh, Hamilton County and the region as we possibly can. However, the entire country is asking for personal protective equipment. And so uh, we are, one of the things we initiated uh, a week ago now or, and started advertising a week and a half ago was we are accepting donations from businesses and individuals in Hamilton County. Uh, we have uh, information on that at uh, hcready.org. You can go there, click on our COVID-19 alert, and information there is what we're accepting. Uh, you can call 263-8200 to donate. We have seen some success with that. And then what we are doing with that equipment is we are working with the Health Collab to put that into a regional cache so that uh, if there is a need within the region that the Health Collab serves, which is the, which is the immediate tri-state, that uh, they are uh, proportioning that out and trying to help all organizations across the tri-state. So that's not just for Hamilton County. We, we, we felt when we started that effort that um, we needed to be the example and not hoard, and we wanted to share that if there's a need in the tri-state that we try to, try to assist that. So, um, and our providers in the tri-state know how to access that through the Health Collab. And finally, um, if you do uh, find the need for, and, and we're working with all healthcare providers and first responders on conservation, uh, so that's going to be key to get through this event, is that people uh, and organizations judiciously use the, the personal protective equipment that they do have until we can get the national pipeline going again. And then, so that is the immediate future. Uh, so we, we do have some personal protective equipment. Uh, I know that I, I speak directly to uh, local fire chiefs, police chiefs, health care providers, that we are uh, conserving as much as possible, um, and that uh, if an organization is completely out, we try to help them as much as possible. We are working with the health department on the strategic national stockpile and the distribution of that, uh, but that is fairly limited. Uh, and uh, so it's going to be, um, I, I don't have a time frame on when that supply chain will be up and running. Uh, but we are working aggressively with our state and federal partners and the federal government to get that supply chain moving and making sure that we have enough personal protective equipment to serve uh, the critical needs for people that uh, need health care services. Thanks, Nick. Um, just a couple of other things before we go to questions. Um, I think we mentioned that or, or at, at a previous um, briefing but the state of Ohio has expanded our capacity for prevention, retention, and contingency funds. Um, so this is cash assistance up to $3,000 available to people who are suffering from an immediate hardship and can be used for rent, car repairs, and other emergent needs. Um, so, uh, you know, you do have to qualify. Uh, and so I'm going to give you a number to, for you to call to see if you do qualify for that assistance. Um, it's through Hamilton County JFS, and the number is 
Um, so if you are experiencing some hardship, uh, and it's, it's amazing to me how quickly um, we are experiencing some of these hardships in the community. And so uh, JFS has been quick to respond, and so please call that number, and if you need the assistance, um, they will do their best to make it available to you. Uh, one other thing is that uh, tomorrow we are going to be joined by Suzanne Burke from the Council on Aging. We have received a lot of questions about seniors in our community and about how the Council on Aging is responding. The county has a relationship with the Council on Aging through our levy funds. Uh, remember, the senior services levy is what primarily funds the Council on Aging's program for seniors. It's the in-home care uh, for seniors in our community to make sure they can stay home and not have to go to a nursing home. Uh, and so we provide services there like uh, delivering groceries or taking folks to doctor's appointments, that kind of thing. And so the COA is a primary uh, resource when we talk about seniors, many of whom have not left their homes for quite some time now and may need some assistance, uh, particularly related to food. Uh, she, they also coordinate the Meals on Wheels. And so um, we put out the call uh, a while back, I think it was last week, uh, for volunteers. We did get some responses. Thanks to those of you that were able to do that and deliver uh, Meals on Wheels and uh, boxes of food that will last longer, have a longer shelf life to the seniors in this community. I mean, from personal experience, my mom hasn't gone out in a week and a half or two weeks, and at this point, we're all just waving through the door at her uh, because no one wants to come in contact with my mom, who is in her 80s. And so I think a lot of us are finding ourselves in that situation, but for the seniors that don't have that kind of support system, we need to respond. And so Suzanne Burke will be here tomorrow to talk about the community's response and how people can plug in to that response. Um, so with that, Bridget, I think we're ready for questions. Um, fire away. John London from News 5 asks for you, Commissioner, what concerns, if any, do you have about religious institutions holding in-person services with large gatherings? Solid Rock Church in Butler County is continuing to hold services, and some of their members live here in Hamilton County. So, as you know, the stay-at-home order did exempt religious institutions. Um, that said, our Hamilton County public health commissioner has advised that people stay home if you can, and if you can't, practice social distancing. Um, so that is the advice from the health commissioner, uh, and I leave it to people to interpret that advice, but it seems clear uh, that we should be practicing social distancing and staying at home when we can. This question is for Director Crosley. News 5 asks, what do you have to do to keep terrorism threats at bay at a time when so much focus is on COVID-19? So I just want to reassure the public that while a, a good portion of uh, the government is focused on the COVID-19 response and recovery, that our complete comprehensive emergency management system continues to be operational. So a lot of the uh, transnational and international, uh, even domestic terrorism threat is coordinated through the federal government. And I know that the Department of Homeland Security and all of its agencies and partners are, are focused um, both on the mission to support the response to COVID-19 as well as the terrorism threat. And then here locally, uh, for example, we, we, we focus on all hazards. So emergency, the Emergency Management Agency is in charge of consequence management. And so we continue to maintain our 24-7, 365-day-a-year uh, duty officer. Uh, status. Uh, we came in the other night in our system. We activated the outdoor warning sirens for the tornado that happened. So we have our eyes on all hazards. And I want to remind the public that uh, we are entering the severe weather season. Uh, we are. We continually have uh, random flood threats. Uh, we have severe weather that pops up in the afternoon. So I think that we need to remember that while we are focused on re responding and staying healthy during the COVID-19 response that we uh, remember that there are other things going on and to stay fully aware. So we, we are definitely on top of that and our system will continue to be available should we have something else happen. Another question for you, Director. Uh, Jay Hanselman of WVXU asks, lots of people are showing uh, social media posts making pr uh, protective masks. Are those safe and are they recommended for use? 
So we at this time are not uh, promoting or using those cloth masks. Um, so I'm not a medical professional, uh, but we have, I've reached out actually just this morning to, our, to the health collab to see if we were accepting those or doing anything of those, and we are not. Um, I'm not saying that they couldn't be some type of barrier, but the kind of personal protective equipment we're looking at is, is principally for the healthcare environment as well as uh, first responders. So, um, uh, no, personally, I would not use them. Right now, uh, John London asked the follow up What are the PPE numbers? What do we have and how much? What criteria do you have for the donations? So the criteria for the donations is at uh, hcready.org on our COVID-19 link. Uh, so the information on what we're accepting and the condition, and then you can call 263-8200 to see if uh, what you have is appropriate to be donated. Um, I do not have numbers on current PPE levels. That fluctuates from day to day. Uh, and right now we're just focused on meeting the bare minimum need that we have with the cash that we have. Would EMA ever act on its own regarding anything like a lockdown, or would it take its cues completely from the governor? So we do not act. Uh, we do not have that authority. Uh, so right now, uh, the stay-at-home order and other orders are under the public health authority. Uh, so right now, the, the state uh, took the initiative to uh, implement stuff statewide. But we work with uh, Commissioner Kesterman and the other health commissioners in the county should they need to issue anything locally. But right now, that's been coordinated through Director Acton at the state. Thank you. This uh, question is for Commissioner Driehaus. Is any idea how many tests are available in Hamilton County? How many are being tested compared to last week? Is the jump in COVID-19 numbers a result of more be people being tested? Well, I... I do think there's a relationship between uh, the number of people being tested and the numbers going up. Um, you know, I've heard the health commissioners say, uh, respond to other people and keep your distance as if they have COVID-19 because so many people in the community are asymptomatic. Uh, and so um, as far as the numbers go, um, I, you know, I can get, as Nick said, uh, the numbers here are changing and they're very fluid. And so, um, you know, we, we can, it can provide those kinds of updates. Well, I have talked, to, it, it, Nick talked a lot about the Health Collaborative. The Health Collaborative is a collection of the health professionals in this community, uh, the major hospitals in this community that have formed a collaborative so that they can respond collectively in a time like this. Uh, they've been in existence for years in Hamilton County. We have worked with them uh, through a lot of the um, addiction uh, response issues that we deal with in Hamilton County. Um, so it is a very strong, solid group. And so we heard from them yesterday that um, things are stable at this moment in time in the hospitals. Uh, the challenge is as we head up this side of the curve, uh, what are we gonna see in the future? And that's what all of this is about, is flattening the curve so that they have the capacity that they need when we hit the top of the curve. And so right now, we're in a stable position knowing that we are gonna have to have more capacity in the future, near future. They're responding to that. I can provide some updates and maybe we can get somebody in from the Health Collaborative uh, in one of these briefings to provide more clarity to that. But what I do know is that uh, I've been told we're, we're good at the moment we're concerned about the need for capacity in the near future. And so if we do these preventive measures, we'll tamp down the curve and not have to have extreme capacity in this community because people haven't been following the advice of the health commissioner. Commissioner, have you received rock solid information about the numbers of people tested in Hamilton County so far and any estimate about how many might need to be tested? I'm, I'm not sure what rock solid means. Um, so what I know is that uh, we have given, the, the county, um, the health commissioner has given advice to people that if you think you need to be tested, if you're exhibiting symptoms, call your doctor. Stay at home, call your doctor. 
And so the doctors are giving advice to individuals, and I am not a doctor, uh, and so I'm not going to give that advice, but my understanding is that those individuals that are in at-risk categories, uh, that have some pre-existing conditions, are of a certain age, um, then might be tested and directed to um, you know, a testing facility. And so that's been the advice given. So uh, it, it, am I rock solid on what, who's being tested? I'm not, you know, not everyone's being tested. Not everyone should be tested. Uh, and so the individuals that need to be tested, I mean, the whole idea is about capacity. So, I mean, I haven't been tested because I'm, I'm not exhibiting any symptoms. I'm not in an at-risk category. I'm near the age, but not quite, uh, and so I haven't been tested. Why would I be? I, we need to reserve that capacity for the individuals that need it. So I'm confident that we've got the capacity th for those individuals, um, and, and that's what I've been told. Uh, and so the numbers will increase as we have more testing results available to us. Um, but you know, we've been testing for a number of weeks here in Hamilton County, and the numbers are on the rise. Commissioner, one more question for you. How much money is available for hardship cases? Total pool of money, do you have a sense? Well, I'm, I'm get, as you can see, I'm getting advice. Just, just shout it out to me. $500,000 a month for Hamilton County total. Th thank you. Thank you for, uh, there are people more than six feet away from me. Um, offering information. Thank you for that. And it appears that we do not have any final questions from the media. Okay, thank you. Um, so thanks again for um, you know being part of the effort here to uh, respond to what we know people need to do in our community, um, to what business need, need to do in our community. We're all in this together. Uh, so thank you for participating and being, being part of the partnership here. Uh, again, we're gonna have Suzanne Burke available tomorrow to talk a lot about seniors and our response to the need for the seniors in our community. I think it's a really important conversation. I've gotten a lot of questions about that. And so uh, we'll bring her in and do our best to answer those questions. So thanks again.